。在两千年拍了一个电影叫《你那边几点》，里面有一个场景需要一个老的戏员。啊，我就在台北，啊，刚好还有一家老戏员在，啊，台北市的边缘，啊，那个戏员叫符合戏员，我找到他。啊，他那个时候是一个呃二轮戏员，就是呃每一天呃连续的放两部电影，然后观众非常少，而且很多呃几乎变成了一个同志会出没的地方。啊，我找到那家戏院，我觉得呃跟我小时候看的戏院是一样的，有有一千多个人的位置啊，在一个市场的呃楼上啊。Simon Leung's 2003 film *Goodbye Dragon Inn* explores the ideology of late capitalism and nostalgia through its aesthetic and subject matter. However, this framework carries limitations. The film's slow pacing, accentuated by subtle cuts and physically restrained characters like the ticket lady played by Cheng Shang Chi, the torrential rain, and metatextual story featuring a film within a film, and Wuja heroes like Miao Tian and Chun Shi, who play themselves watching themselves. Reinforces the notion of a time past, which still lingers in the present. There's also an irony that Sai's film itself is part of a cinema of slowness, of contemplation, as if Sai wanted to live again in the sensuous experience of a moment revealed in its authenticity. Yet the film being played is a martial arts or fast film. Ideology, according to Stuart Hall, has its roots in the expression of man's relation to nature becoming socially mediated. Sai's film is a nostalgic yearning for his youth and the death of celluloid, which, through the process of its multimediaization, the cinema has lost its identity as a medium, its medium specificity. However, ideology can't be reduced to the only framework through which to view *Goodbye Dragon Inn*. Concepts like phenomenology prove to counteract the inherently abstract nature of an ideological framework through its reliance on the senses. Ideology stems from the notion that as soon as something is re-presented, it is shaped by the principles, beliefs, and societal values of that creator. The blind adoration which theorists, critics, and historians often share can lead to an idealization of cinema and a reification of love, best demonstrated in Christian Metz's equivocation that cinematic discourse often, by unexpected paths, unperceived by those who have quite unintentionally taken them. To paths which manifest the radical exteriority of effects to conscious intentions, thus, ideology is an abstract identity, and David Bordwell believes any film can create an ideological stance, whether overtly stated or tacit. However, *Goodbye Dragon Inn* operates in a more nuanced and ambiguous way. Kiyonobu Mitamura highlights this point. He is credited as a Japanese tourist in Taipei. Which is important due to the historical implication of Taiwan being colonized by the Japanese until the end of World War II. The single line of dialogue which the tourist speaks suggests Sai has a connection to myths of haunting, which is indicative of nostalgia. The man's acknowledgement of the tourist's national identity by saying "sayonara" and the tourist's gentle bow reiterates the film's metatextual obsession with departures or goodbyes, because the line operates not just linguistically. But metaphorically and symbolically, in representing a departure, Stuart Hall develops his definition of ideology and its relationship to culture by stating that human culture is the result and the record of man's developing mastery over nature, his capacity to modify nature to his use. Using this notion, it's clear the central tension of Sai's movie revolves around time passing in a range of different contexts, such as the closing of the Fuho Grand Theatre. This shot exemplifies what Luca Tiago notes as the importance of Sai's consistent framing choices. In his film, solitary characters are constantly delimited by windows, doors, mirrors, and glasses—a frame within frame device, itself evoking the Brechtian technique of distanciation, in which audiences are reminded of the illusion they are consuming. When the roller moves down, blocking the frame, it causes the audience to reflect on the artifice of the film, because we become aware. Of the absence of the projectionist's body, reiterating the idea that something is escaping. Hall's discussion of mastery of nature is prevalent in the medium specificity of film, which itself was also passing at the time of filming, as exemplified in three thematic points. The first of which was the crisis celluloid was undergoing, something which Susan Sontag expressed in the New York Times in 1996 as, "Cinema's 100 years seem to have the shape of a life cycle." 
an inevitable birth, the steady accumulation of glories, and the onset in the last decade of an ignominious, irreversible decline. Li Kang Sheng, who plays Xia Ken, unrolls the film, fatigued and worn out, showing the demise of both the theatre and celluloid as a medium. Secondly, the death of film culture. The ticket lady sweeps up the floors of the empty theatre filmed in sombre light to heighten its imminent closure, which creates an atmosphere of hollowness. And lastly, the negligence of culture. The dialogue which the two characters exchange causes the two actors to recognise the absence of their own presence. The apparent rain in the background and the incandescent lighting makes the atmosphere seem spooky. Nicholas de Viers writes that they seem to have become the living ghosts of this cinema. <laughs> Zaimalaysia 刚好我后来拍你那边几天又遇到台北的这家老戏院 film is rooted in an ideology of nostalgia which Nick Pinkerton's recent authoritative monograph surveys. Nick discusses the cinemas of his youth in Cincinnati in which a single theatre complex was redeveloped into an architecturally undistinguished building of which he was nevertheless fond. Nick contrasts this to the theatres Sai would have experienced in Malaysia, proclaiming however that nostalgia of this sort is indifferent to such distinctions. Dreams are an underlying feature of nostalgia. Sigmund Freud believed every dream reveals itself as a psychical structure which has a meaning and which can be inserted at an assignable point in the mental activities of waking life. Thus, Sai's recurring dream of the Odeon Theatre from his childhood in Malaysia, which turned the film into production, is a manifestation of this subconscious desire. Sai challenges representations of Western forms of nostalgia through the predominance of the haunted cinema and the prevalence of ghosts, best demonstrated in Yang Kui Miei, credited as the peanut lady who pervades the film in a mysterious way. Sai's subtle evocation of ghosts suggests a point of distinction, which Jacques Derrida champions by saying, society does no more than disavow the undeniable itself. The ghost never dies, it remains always to come and to come back, because his film is a recognition of life and death. Western representations of nostalgia can assume an explicit acknowledgement of the reference to the past they yearn for, such as the 1950s noir in Pulp Fiction, Charles de Gaulle France in Emily, and Ocker Australia in Muriel's Wedding. Donald Trump's exclamatory slogan during the 2016 election, Make America Great Again, also propelled a nostalgic ideology enmeshed in conservatism. Thus, Sai explicates his nostalgia in a subtle way because it is so personal and steeped in his childhood and consumption of Asian cinema. Sai's films influenced by real-life experiences, an example being the floods that he claims to have experienced in different houses. Sai's neon-lit cinema, which is dank and wet, drenched in rain, suggests a homeliness and love of film in a less explicit way than the films mentioned before. Although an ideological framework or theory is important in understanding the political implications of a text or representation, it doesn't account for other aspects such as the experience of something. Sai cinema is part of the slow cinema movement, emphasised by long takes, causing what Fran Martin calls a temporal dysphoria, 
a disorientation in relation to time rather than space, designating something analogous to motion sickness. Time sickness? A picture punk were a cetical, writing in the liner notes of the recently re-released DVD, comments that slow cinema films work on a more conceptual or intellectual level, where with size work, he feels very connected.